Two men who can tell you the secret of Mallorca are Alan Warner and Brian Goulding. As chief executives of a major British travel organization, they not only handle nearly one in ten of those British holidaymakers visiting Mallorca, but whenever possible, they like to be on hand to welcome their guests personally. Alan Warner and Brian Goulding first came to Mallorca 12 years ago and now come back whenever they can. Alan will tell you about Mallorca's charisma, that subtle mix of old and new. How behind the sun-drenched beaches with their smart hotels lies another Mallorca that retains the timeless essence of Spain. And he should know. In this traditional farmhouse, set among olives and almonds in the heart of the countryside, he now spends his own family holidays. Part of the magic of Mallorca is that it provides year-round holidays to suit any taste. Warner's Contiki Hotel, for instance, is totally self-contained. Typical of the new arrivals are two London girls, Jan and Sue, hungry for sunshine and eager to taste what Mallorca has to offer. The welcome is warm and friendly, formalities soon completed you quickly fall into the infectious party spirit of the Contiki. The girls' bedroom is typical of the Contiki's high standard. Like all guests, they have their own private bathroom with shower and toilet. There are comfortable beds, telephone, lots of wardrobe space, and all rooms are serviced daily. Every room has a balcony overlooking the long, sandy Playa de Palma beach and the blue sea sparkling in the sun beyond. And if you can't quite make that 20 yards to the beach, well, there's always the Contiki's pool. VistaJet hotels are equally modern, smart, and friendly. Children are really made to feel at home. These hotels are distinguished by their outstanding children's facilities and unique free nanny service. Children play under constant supervision, and VistaJet nannies are trained to keep them amused during the day and to babysit at night. This leaves their parents really free to come and go as they please. At a VistaJet hotel, everything is there for the asking. But of course, there are people who prefer to look after themselves. In a rent -a flat self-catering apartment, you can do exactly as you please. There are well-equipped kitchens, so you can cook when and what you want. These apartments vary in size, sleeping from two to eight people. They are fully furnished and equipped, even down to a bottle opener. But whatever type of holiday you take, there's always the beach. Mallorca has beaches to suit all moods and all people. Many are big, bouncy, friendly, altogether beaches, like this one at Aranol. But around the island are others, all different. You'll find boozy beaches with bars quieter beaches, hemmed in by craggy rocks, and secluded beaches, backed by pines. There are beaches where it all happens, and beaches where nothing happens at all. But most of them slope so gently into the warm water that even the tiniest toddler can bathe quite safely. Mallorca's beaches are sunny, sandy, 
sociable too, if you like that sort of thing. For a glimpse of Spain behind the beaches, travel the local way. This old electric train, with its faded period charm, is one of only two left. Keith and Anne Lewis, with their children, Karen and Wendy, found the hour's trip from Palma to Sona full of exciting things. This cross-island journey is Mallorca in a cameo. Sola, a market town, is typically Spanish. Despite the influence of tourism, life jogs along in its own quiet way. Like many towns, Sola has two centers. In medieval times, ports were so often sacked by tip-and-run raiders from the sea, the commercial centers were built safely inland. An eccentric tram, 60 years old, clatters the 20 minutes between the two centers. You can even lean out and pick oranges and lemons as you go. But don't let the ticket collector catch you. Sola's Crescent Port is one of the island's most charming. You'll find the real life of any Mediterranean island centers around the hustle and bustle of its fishing harbor. Things carry on as always unchecked by so-called progress. These are the faces that hold a mirror to Mallorca's past, Roman, Arab, Catalan, the stamp of conquerors. There's no better way of seeing Mallorca's spectacular coast than from a boat, a pleasure boat. They leave every day from all parts of the island. This one, from Sola, passes deep narrow inlets where strange shaped rocks rise starkly from navy blue water to over a thousand feet. From wherever you start, you'll see sights never glimpsed from land. other islands too, like lonely Formentor with its deserted sands. Yes, flamenco, here in the modern Contiki, but still full of the fire and passion of old Spain. In the ballroom of the Contiki, friends meet to enjoy an evening of first-class bands, comedians and cabaret stars, providing the sort of entertainment to make your holiday swing. And who knows, you might even be crowned Miss Contiki. <laughs> Apart from this entertainment on your own doorstep, you'll find a nightlife in Parma that's rated among the best and cheapest in Europe. 
nightclubs with floor shows, and psychedelic discotheques where you can dance till dawn. Most Spanish towns have their flea markets called rastros, and this one in Palma is as colorful as any. This rastro has been held every Saturday morning for as long as anyone can remember. It brings two sides of the island together as tourists and traders mingle. With their children safely in the hands of a VistaJet nanny, Keith and Anne have plenty of time to browse. <coughs> Gypsies and country people bring in their livestock and vegetables. If they sell them, they're all right for another week. If they don't, well, at least they'll have something to take home and eat. But you can't eat antiques, even if some were made last week. Still, there's always a taker and a loser. Oh well, it'll do for Aunt Edna. Was it a bargain? Obviously. Parma, Mallorca's capital, was once a major Mediterranean trading center. Its wealthy nobles spent their money on gracing the city with stately homes and miniature palaces. Like all cities with a changing history, Parma is a fascinating jumble of narrow streets climbing and falling round its huge bay. When you're tired and thirsty, drop into a tapas bar like Mariano's El Pilon. These bars are peculiar to Spain. Tapas are tempting titbits. Juicy grilled prawns, tasty fish rissoles, artichokes in crisp, thin batter, sardines, mushrooms in sauce, liver, kidney, it never seems to end. Spaniards like a snack or two to keep them going between meals. In fact, tapas means filler or stopper, so don't be deceived. A plateful is almost a meal in itself. Keith and Anne decide to try a local speciality, calamaris or squid. Mmm, delicious. Eating in Spain is treated as something special, a social occasion, more than just a meal. You'll appreciate the good food and attention you get in restaurants like Ses Bovades, that means cellar. When it comes to seafood, well, the fish is so fresh, it virtually jumps out of the sea onto your plate. You can find charcoal grilled mullet or bream, giant sardines, cuttlefish, crab, lobster, mussels. You name it, they have it. In a warm, sunny climate like Mallorca's, eating out can be a real pleasure. And there's no hurry. It's not unusual to start lunch at three in the afternoon and finish at tea time. Hey, that's never the way to treat a Spanish prawn. Still, nothing could spoil the taste. Keith has the wanderlust. And one of the best ways of wandering in Mallorca is to hire a car. It's simple, inexpensive, and ideal for getting off the beaten track. On this road to Sola, there are more than 50 hairpin bends with a new view at every turn. Although you could just about drive round this island in a long day, into its small area, it packs as much variety as you'd find in a whole continent. 
The terraces on these mountain slopes were first built by the Moors a thousand years ago. The plains they irrigated so well now produce almonds, oranges, lemons, figs, peaches. But while they cultivated the land, they culled the trading routes for booty. Parma flourished as a center for piracy until the Moors were driven out in 1229 by King Jamie the Conqueror, a formidable giant over seven feet tall. A little later, Mallorca became part of Spain and its battles were over. Tranquil little villages like Dea, nestling in the mountains above the sea, are typical of Mallorca's north coast. Bagpipes? Yes, oddly enough, they are a traditional feature of Mallorca. These barbecues have become as popular here as anywhere in the Western world. For a moderate sum, you can eat, drink, sing and dance as much as you like. about the hangover. Tomorrow's another day. So, this is the magic of Mallorca. The holiday's over, but the memory lingers on.